this is a Magnivox CD player CDB 582 it's a really old one you can see the sticker become like yellowish and this one is 1988 so the customer find this uh, device in storage unit he doesn't know much about it all he said is the device won't power on he made some search about it replaced the fuse still doesn't power on I did see some some light over there at the first and they hear the motor spinning so let's wait a second is did it the first time but doesn't want to do it now so let's wait no doesn't want to do it transporting the device from one place to another place need to put this so one of them is here one of them it's right here these two Well, let's take it apart and look at it so this is a really old CD player let's power it on see what it's doing you can see the the CD is spinning okay it won't eject or here when I click open close it won't eject there is nothing on the display it won't take the disc as well yeah no numbers not another screen the CD is spinning I don't see any bad capacitors but I see something right here I don't know if you can see it you see that's yeah you see not these lines is there is another crack right over there by this metal yeah you see it now when I press on it so let's take it apart and fix that crack and they see some leaked capacitor over there I don't know that's capacitor leaking or you see right by that capacitor or is a glue but we're gonna figure out that after we take it apart so each wire they have their color on it so I'm not gonna mix the wires that's a good thing yeah this is our linear and you know the linear the power it's go direct to the transformer then the transformer it has the output alternative output then from that alternative output to the diodes and filter but the switching uh, power supply we have the power go to the bridge diode to the MOSFETs and the switching ICs to the small transformer then transformer to the output You see how this mechanism work? <laughs> so 
see, that's the crack. Okay, let's check if all the components is good here. Yeah, look like all the components is good. So we just, we have to do the jumpers. Yeah, I don't want to do a tight jump here because if the board move it, that jumper is going to crack. But the wire is flexible, so even if the board move it, this should be okay. Alright, so this trace is still good. We have one big trace here and two small traces and we have some solder, solder this ones. There is a crack here, but that didn't do anything. Like this race is going to nowhere. So let's solder some solder points that they look uh, cracked. Yeah, any solder has a black ring or black circle around it, could be that's a crack or a bad solder switch. Yeah, that one is, looks bad. The microprocessor.
let's put some solder in this uh, we have some copper here we can put that one is cracked Okay, we have the display now. Well, see, it's trying to eject. I want to see if it's going to play. It's trying to play, but look what it's doing. We know the motor is good. Oh, is that a bad capacitor? Or is it just a glue? No, it could be just a glue. Is playing now, and they can see the seconds is going. Uh, let's watch the speaker. Yep, it's play fine. But look how when I click the eject button, it try to eject. So we need to to fix that.
but this one is a little bit tight. This one here is kind of a little bit tight. Here, if I lift it up, we can get this one a little bit. We put some oil and we stretch this one that's holding it's open all right It works. So, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. See you again.